Okay, so we're inside the interior of the Volkswagen Jetta MK2 Mortal Kombat Ermac Edition. <laughs> as like I like to call it. Anyways, the interior of the Jetta. It's not that bad. Oh, that? That's just a little preview of what's come. So, the original uh, thing, well, when I purchased this car, it had no stereo. So, I figured... You need some information from your vehicle when you're right when you're driving it. That is very crucial, such as the voltage of your car. This could tell you if you're just running on the battery. Pretty much a diagnosis for your alternator. Very important to have inside your vehicle. And also your water temperature. Now we do have a temperature gauge right there. However, I want something a little bit more specific. 100, 180, 200, 250 Fahrenheit. How we're gonna do this one? Well, you're gonna ha we're gonna have to buy uh, a cut-in adapter. We're gonna cut in the top coolant hose, buy a sensor, and wire it. This one, not so much. As long as we could get from our ground, uh, we're gonna have to ground it and then tap into something that has 12 volts in it. That way, we have some type of information in the vehicle when you're driving it. Now, why here? Well, why not? This is my car. Nah, just really. It's very important that when you're driving, your eyes are on the road. If you put those gauges down there, the time between here and there, it's a lot. Every second counts when you're driving to see what's around you. Now, the higher up, it's easier. They're within your range of view, your, your line of sight. It's not that far off compared to down there, not so much. In the meantime, this is where they're going to be at. I like them there, we're going to put them there, and that's what I want. So, another thing with this, we're going to take the whole trim off. There's one bolt there, I'm sure there's some other there. Here's one, two, well, hopefully that's it. We're also going to have to take all these switches out, and what you do is... Just reach behind and pop them off. Pop them off. The ones that, like the, the emergency, the hazards, I believe they have some wires connected to them. Just pull them out. This, these little things, just pull out. Just pull out this as well. And let's get to it. Okay, so this is what you should be looking like. All the switches are out this come out so you don't really have to disconnect this it just actually pops off from this just be gentle with stuff especially this car being a 92 very fragile some parts are hard to come by some are not but you know still treated with respect okay after you took out the trim just as a reference there's one bolt right there Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So it should be seven in total. Now you got that everything on the way. We can start taking off the bolt for the cluster. One, two. Is it two? Yeah, there should be another one somewhere. I see one here. I don't see another. I think it's just two screws holding it on. But be very gentle. Uh, where I'm gonna put is a piece of cloth here, so the plastic won't get too scratched up or anything like that. And look, now we have complete access to actually extend our wires from here all the way down over here. That way, when in the future we're gonna do the double din here, we won't have to take this out anymore. This will be hopefully the last time we expose all this wiring. All right, let's get to it. Okay. So we deviated a bit from the plan. We took this thing off from the top. So originally it comes like this. You have to pop these clips here, 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 here. Very gently. Like I said, it takes a lot of patience. So the original bulbs go here, here, and here. Now, they are really small. I thought these were like 194. These are smaller. 
Not a lot light going to come through. So, what we're going to do, luckily, this, there's a lot of space behind that. So the way it works, the two bulbs light up here, light reflects, it shoots down to the gauge cluster. But as you saw, the light is very dim. And also, even if we were to replace it with some LED bulbs, the LED bulbs that will fit here are very small and the light won't disperse as much to the tachometer and the RPM. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to our local auto parts store or Walmart and get a LED strip. And we're gonna put it right behind this and we're gonna feed it through here and we're gonna rig it up somehow, some way to make this work. So like I said, you always have to think on the fly. Things never go out as you plan. Sometimes it's for the best. Also, now that we're going to the store, we're going to pick up some paint that we took of the plastic sh shield here very carefully. Cover this up with some newspaper and then just spray them off. I don't really like to take the, the needles off because you're bound to mess it up. So we're going to cover the whole background up with newspaper and spray these on. Or with paint, um, paper tape. Okay, so this is where we're at right now. We have located a ground for our gauges and I used part of that steering column in the back. As you can see, we got the gauge cluster out of here. That's the speedometer, sensor, whatever. So we routed our grounds. Now, where are you gonna get power from? There's multiple places I chose to use the defroster. I live in the south, so not a lot of cold mornings or snow on top of the car that I need the defroster for. So what I did, I tapped into the switch. Right there is the main power, and that is for the lights. So I'm just having it right now just for demonstration purposes. So let me just hit the switch, the light switch. As you can see, they turn on. Voltage water. Now, these are not the bulbs that came with the lights. I put some LED hyper bright bulbs so they look sick. And they will match the gauge cluster once I paint it just like that. So it looks OEM. And it's video, which is what... Uh, the company that makes all the tags for the majority of these German cars and some imports. So, see, we're going to turn off the light. Turns off. Let's turn the ignition. And well, I think we're going to need the key for that. Alright. We're not going to crank the car, but we're just going to put it first. And there we go. See? power to the gauge tells you the voltage how much you run in all that good jazz all right now that we got that done let's make the pod or the plastic thing that's going to be holding our gauges in place and after that we're going to extend those radio wires further down to the dash where they can hang out until we save enough money for that double din here alright so what we're going to do is you could buy your own plastic or you could be resourceful and find something that's just laying around so what is this this is from a chair from Ikea so what I'm going to do it's that um, that center piece where the radio was supposed to go and stuff like that. I'm going to measure it. We're going to get our Dremel, cut it, make two holes, and just make it fit. And this is very durable plastic. It's kind of flexible, but it's pretty thick. You can use whatever you want. Use wood. That'd be a pretty cool thing, but wood catches on fire.
plastic just melts because it's oil. But you do what you want. I'm using what I have. Alright, so now that we got our panel cut and we are sure it fits in here, we're gonna grab one of those gauge holder things that go that screw in the back. That way we can measure. Just trace it and cut where we need. All right, so this is how it's supposed to look like. Now, how do I make that perfect hole? Well, you can use a stencil and draw it and use an X-Acto knife and do the best you can. Or, if you have something like this laying around, I don't know the exact measurement, but it is perfect for it because that is the same size of the gauge. Your gauge might different might be different because I don't know what kind what brand you're getting. But this is perfect for this. Same size. Makes the job so much easier. So now that you have your hole, you put the gauge in, you put the lock behind it. And now we're gonna put the other one. <laughs> 